Okay, so we took some time to set up this Google Search Console. We looked at a few of the other screens over here. Uh, you've also got at the top right corner help, um, and you can get various uh, articles there about how to use this. And then you've also got this gear for settings. You can look at settings yourself. It's not that complex, but that's um, the general anatomy of Google Search Console in general. I want to look at specifically, okay, we've got the setup, what good is it? <clears throat> we should already see at least we've got that speed ranking thing, that's very good to know about. But usually what you'll be doing with this thing is you'll be, you'll be looking deeper at your data. So I've got this client set up here, you've got one or the other, and if you just set this up, you might not have a lot of data to look at. But on your website, go ahead and click on its name, either version, doesn't quite matter, but click on your on your website, and then it should take you to a screen that looks something like this, and it may not have data at the moment to show. Again, this will show data as time goes on. So I've had this set up for a while, and what I'm seeing here is this sort of data. At the very least, probably what it'll tell you, maybe in this column of crawl errors, if you've got any problems with the site. Again, if it doesn't tell you anything, don't worry. You just set it up. You'll have to wait a little bit. I don't know how much time, but you'll have to wait a little bit. We've got three columns here. I'll give you an overview of them. Um, current status regarding the site itself, details of the site. Is the connection to the server okay? Is your robots text good? I'll explain that in a moment. Again, is the connection to your server working? Over here, errors, <coughs> URLs. Mine says I've got 41 not found. <clears throat> Mine says that Google thinks there are 41 broken links. The, some of them may be false positives, as I'll explain in a moment. But this is also something to think about regarding SEO. Search engines <coughs> are going to look at your site and if you've got lots of broken links, that's not good. That is detrimental to some degree to user experience. Someone visits my site, they want to click on the link of Shop Now, and that link is broken. Well, that's terrible. Someone is on my products page, and they click to view one of my products, and it's a broken link. That's not good. Not only am I losing a sale, but I'm also hurting myself via my search rankings. So we'll explore this deeper in a moment, but this is telling me there might be 41 broken links. <coughs> see them in a moment. Search analytics, I got 3,000 clicks in the last month. This shows you a month at a time. So 3,000 clicks or so to the website in one month, and then an upward trend. Notice it started here and not up here. So upward trend, even though we've got these spikes, kind of like the stock market. You're going to have these volatile points, and if you're looking at the stock market and only this point, it's terrible. I'm losing all my money. No, if you look at it in this point, I'm actually earning money. With search results, same thing. Uh, I've got a drop and a rise and a drop and a rise, but in the long term here, I've still got an increase of traffic. Google Analytics is much better for this, but this can give me an overview at a glance. And then we've got sitemaps. These are basically the list of all of the addresses and pictures and such on my website. Um, I can't exactly say in a lecture here to everyone how to set up a sitemap. I can gladly do that during the breaks and such. But a sitemap is something that your website software usually creates. That is a list of all of your links. It's a technical document with, eight, with XML code. It's not simply a Word document that I write and I write all my pages. That's not, that's not a, a sitemap. It's a technical coded document that usually a regular person does not create. Even me that I've been doing this for 15 years, I would not create a sitemap myself. It's complex. The software will do it. Let's say I use my software, I create a sitemap, and then I submit my sitemap. There'll be a button here, submit your sitemap, if you don't have one. You submit the sitemap, and then the search, that helps your search results even more. Because then the search engine will know about every page on your site, every link on your site, every picture, everything of your site. So when someone searches how to install WordPress, and I have an article on my site that is titled that, I could be found. 
eventually the search engine will get around to crawling your site, but it has to crawl another million other sites per second. So if you submit a sitemap, you're helping the search engine know more about your site as much as possible to get found. Mine says I've got five warnings, so I might want to take a look at that. This is the big idea with the search console. Are there problems with your site? And how to fix them? When we get to Google Analytics soon, that'll be other kinds of data. And I wish they would integrate it all together, but I don't think they will. I, I, I tell people they'll probably put them together at some point. But it's been years. I don't think they're going to put them together. And now they've made Google Analytics and Google Analytics Premium. Have you heard of that? I don't even have enough knowledge on Google Premium, Google Analytics Premium yet. There's only so many hours in the day to learn stuff, and I haven't looked into what Google Analytics Premium is yet. So it's a good idea to have both of these set up, <coughs> Analytics and Search Console, and check them both. Once a month is good. Good target. Check these analytics once a month. On the left side, you've got several other links to look at. We won't quite have time to look at every single screen here, but the general is crawl errors, search analytics, and sitemap. If I click on crawl errors, this might be valuable to look at. Yes? They're all pretty much the same, but if I've got WordPress, I'm usually going to use uh, the Yoast SEO plugin to create my sitemap. So here under Search Console, I'm looking at site errors. I can see it in terms of desktop, smartphone, feature phone. Desktop obviously is laptop or desktop. Smartphone is, you know, these smartphones. What's a feature phone? I would call the feature phone the dumb phones, you know, the flip phones, those things that don't do anything. I don't know why they call them feature phones. There's no features on those things. But they call those feature phones, which are basically the non-smartphones. I guess they don't want to be mean and call them dumb phones. They call them feature phones. But this will tell you your broken links as if we viewed your site in all of these three possibilities. And that one I, I don't really... Uh, pay too much attention, although technically we should, because not everyone in the world obviously has a smartphone. But anyway, this is showing that there's been this downward trend and then an upward trend of broken links on this particular site. And as I said, broken links are not good, but that's one of the many things that <clears throat> the search engine looks at. Is 41 broken links bad? Maybe. Maybe not. If you've got a website with, you know, 45 links and 41 are broken, that's terrible. But if I've got a website with 200 links and 41 are broken, that's still bad, but maybe not terrible. You're going to really need to look at your own website to decide the severity of these things because this client is a restaurant that has various events. Eventually, the events run their course and they're removed. But Google sees that as a broken link because that page doesn't exist anymore on the site. Of course it doesn't exist anymore, the event is over. So let's say there's a particular item like this promotion. Celebrate Christmas? You're a little early. No, this one's left over from last year. So that page no longer exists, that's correct. It's not a broken link, it doesn't exist. So I would go here, select it, and say fix it. It's not broken, it doesn't exist. So how does it fix something that doesn't exist? We're telling Google, we're vouching, we're being honest, and we're telling Google it doesn't exist anymore. It's not a broken link. So yeah, I would tell it. You're doing anything but marking it as fixed. Yes. Taking it out of it. Yeah. Exactly. How did it find it? Well, how did it find it? Well, Google's running 24 hours a day scanning the whole internet, your site, for example, and it's following links, and if it finds a broken link, then it's a broken link. In its database, it previously had a copy of my site where it did exist, and now it checked this, the database, and it sees it no longer exists, so it thinks it's a broken link. So this says, this error will no longer be listed, but may reappear later if the problem is not resolved. So I'm going to say, okay, yeah, that has been resolved. It doesn't exist. We don't have that site anymore. That's one way to fix this. The other way could be that, yes, we do have the Spanish menu broken. 
the broken link could be here in this case that this is looking for menu espanol, but actually it's menu espanol with the little enya symbol. So this might be a legitimate broken link. This is going to be a little more effort to fix because I need to go to my website and make sure that that link exists or set up a or set up a uh, a redirection. I need to go to my website and set a, make a setting that when someone tries to go to the broken link, it will automatically take them to the correct link. That's out of the scope of our class, but depending on your software like WordPress, there's various plugins that will help you fix that. If someone goes to the wrong page, no problem, take them to the right page. Different software does that on your website. Once I set that up, I come back here and I tell Google fixed. Obviously, there's really no, there's no, um, you know, gatekeeper here. I could just turn all of these on and say, yeah, fixed. Mm -hmm. And it'll accept it. But then as it scans your site again in a few weeks or days or months or whatever, and it sees that they're broken again, it's going to go up again. So this is all about honesty. For example, this one, this flash slideshow thing that I know it doesn't work anymore. It's not there anymore. So yeah, that's, that's not there anymore. Anyway, that's what I would go in and do once a month. This is, you get this from Search Console. You don't get anything like this on Analytics. And this might be dragging down your position if you're not checking this. Yes? So once your market is fixed, when it re-scans, will it mark it again or now it won't? It will ignore it. It should ignore it now because at a certain point it'll create a version of your database of the database of your site and it'll see it's fixed and then when it checks again and it and it's fixed then it shouldn't show it up anymore. We also want to do that with the smartphone. If I look at smartphone, okay, on smartphone that's the one we've targeted a little bit more to make sure that one's not broken because we're seeing our traffic is coming most from smartphones. We are getting traffic, of course, from the desktop. But in this client, we're seeing most of our traffic is from smartphone. So that's the one definitely we're on top of to make sure this one is fixed because more traffic is coming from it. And feature phone, similar to that. So it says it can't find this particular product. So I would have to look into that one. So I'm going to go back here to the dashboard. Clicking on Search Console takes you back to the top level where it shows all your websites. Clicking on Dashboard goes back to this one website to see its content. Look at a few more relevant screens that I recommend here. One was Crawl Errors. The other is Search Analytics. I have one question about the markdown. Yes. Um, so no, it doesn't tell you that if you start on the home page, the next page is broken. It's only going to tell you the page that's broken. So if I look at search analytics, this will give me uh, some data, but I think it's much better when we get over to Google search, uh, Google Analytics in a moment. This one is going to tell you within our time period of 30 days that our number of clicks, we can look at it in different ways via country, for example. Again, I don't bother with this screen very much. I do it over at Google Analytics, which we'll get to soon. But as a quick overview, this is showing that these are the keywords, these are the queries, these are the terms that people are searching for on Google and then causing a link, causing traffic to the website. So people are searching for the name of the website on Google search, and then it takes them to the website, okay? They're also searching for Texcoco restaurant, and that takes them to the site. They're also searching for Huitla Coche. If you've taken a previous class of mine, don't answer this, but how many of you have heard of Huitla Coche before this, before today? Huitla Coche. No, no. <laughs> Good. Huitla Coche is a Mexican delicacy that is offered at this restaurant. It's not at very many restaurants throughout the US, but it's a delicacy, it's actually corn, uh, that's the traditional name, the, the fancy name that's uh, 
perhaps taking hold is, is called the Mexican truffle. Um, another classic name for it is corn smut, which is basically this is a fungus that invades corn and turns it from, you know, yellow to very cool shades of like gray and blue and black. And people eat it. People eat everything, right? Mushrooms. Ew, what's a mushroom? But no, saute it up. It's good. People eat, you know, these weird creatures from the sea that have all these legs and pinchers and stuff. Ew, no, people eat that. Fungus on corn? Ew, no, people eat that. <laughs> Bugs? People eat that. Everything. People eat everything. So this is a traditional Mexican uh, delicacy uh, in that um, it's served at the restaurant. You put it in a taco. You add hot sauce and lime or whatever. Right? You know, it's another delicacy to eat. So traffic comes to this website from people searching that keyword. From searching pulque. What's pulque? I don't know. It's getting traffic to the site, but pulque is a Mexican, a traditional Mexican beverage. It's uh, sort of vaguely related to tequila, uh, but it's a lot more viscous. Um, so here I'm seeing these search terms. I might not have thought to use a search term, what is Huitla Coche, but this is, if you take the SEO class, we talk in there about our keywords, devising our keywords to get found when someone searches. And here, this is what Google is seeing from when people have searched in the last month. These are the keywords that people have been typing to find the site that drives traffic. I can look at this under pages. The most viewed page is the home page. Second most is the menu. Third most is the history of barbacoa, of the food, the Spanish version of it. And fourth is the blog post about what is wheat la coche. When you do a Google search for what is wheat la coche, this client will probably appear on the first page somewhere. This client has gotten a lot of traffic from people searching that phrase. What are the countries that are most popular? U.S. and Mexico, of course. Australia. You might not have thought, well, why is why are Australians looking at this Mexican food restaurant? This Mexican food restaurant's specialty is lamb. Australia is pretty famous for their lamb. So people are searching for lamb from Australia, traffic from Australia, India, Philippines, etc. Again, when we get over to Google Analytics, this will be much deeper data. But here I'm seeing what I just said a moment ago. This site gets the most traffic from mobile devices. Nearly 2,000 hits in the past month compared to 1,000 hits. Almost twice the amount of traffic from mobile tablets are lagging. So that's why we better make sure we've got a mobile-friendly website. You can look at the screen on your own, and that's something that we might look at more in the SEO class. But uh, any general questions on this screen before going on? Let's say I go back to the dashboard, the third. I haven't looked at, at it hard enough to give you a good answer on that, because I usually spend my time on analytics rather than that screen. The last, uh, well, one of the last things we'll look at here, again, under sitemaps, uh, I can't exactly teach you how to make a sitemap in a lecture here, but I can help during lab time. But this is what, uh, this is what one of the most important things to do because we're submitting to Google about this website, um, everything about the website. So here it's going to see what are the products, uh, any promotions and galleries or pages. Everything basically is, everything about the site is, is, is being submitted directly to, to Google. And it will, it will look and it will see if there's all your products. And it will see that when it was last updated and all of that. Again, this is a technical document that your software will create. You have it create the software, then you upload it here to search console, and then it will further understand everything about your site. So when someone is searching for, you know, barbecue combos, your page might show up because you've got that content that Google knows about.
let's look at this. Um, you've got all of these different sections. You've got this info button. Click on that info button next to search appearance. This gives you a pop-up of a, of a, um, you know, the usual kind of search result from Google, and then tips on how to influence or edit these. So it tells you there's a title that will appear. If you click there, it tells you what, why it matters and how to edit it. Snippet is the text that appears below. You might have also, depending on your site, you might have site links. So you might have these sort of deep links. So there's example.com, and inside of it, there's extra grumpy cats and all cat caption competition. So these sub pages are part of the main page. Sometimes you see that on search. I want that. I want more of my pages to appear on search. Unfortunately, what this says is you don't get if no, it says uh, you can't activate these. These are generated algorithmically. The search engine will look at your page and analyze everything about it, and it will determine if you should have these extra site links. You can't activate them. You can edit other aspects of the search result, but not that. I would want this as well. Sometimes you see that there is a search. There is a search built into the search to search within my own website. I want that too. I want people to search deeply in my own website through Google. Unfortunately, that's, a not, that's also another one. We display it when we think it might help the user find the result. That's another that you cannot turn on. So it looks like we have to set these all up, but they or they'll start to be set up once you are. These two that I just mentioned. Down. These two that I just mentioned, or all of these. All of them. You want to set up all of them, definitely. But a couple of these, like site links and search, you cannot set them up. They'll set them up. So earlier when I mentioned that, that other kind of data, this is the example of it. If I've got ratings on my website, I want these ratings to appear when people search. That's the big snippet. There's a little bit of setup, but there's something for you to do. Okay, we'll do one more thing, then we'll go on to analytics. This is another important thing that I would recommend. Um, under the section of crawl, go to fetch as Google. Fetch as Google. This is that you've got your website or a sub page of your website and you say, and you tell Google, go get it, go fetch it, look at it as a desktop user. The point of this screen is I would recommend you use fetch and render. What this will do is it'll tell Google right now, go look at my website. So if you've just set up your search console here, Google doesn't quite know you exist yet. If you tell Google, go look at my website, it'll be made, you'll make Google aware of your website and it will check your website, it will render it, meaning it will actually analyze it and look at it. And it'll process it. You want to do this at some point, I don't mean right now, but you want to do this at some point for all of these. Google, look at my website on the desktop. Google, look at my website as a smartphone, as X, X, HTML, as CHTML. Go look at my website. I exist. Have people find me. So this is how you wake up Google, basically, that your site exists. Question. Yes, over here. Yes. <coughs> After you do that fetch, it'll it'll tell you if it worked or not, and then if it did work, then you'll have submit to index. That's the next step. Then you say yes, add this to the Google search results. That's the fastest way to get your content found by the search engines, because this you might have already done this before. You might you might already told Google your site exists, but now you've got a brand new page blog how to eat crickets.
index.html. So I'm telling Google, this page exists. Add it to the index. Yes? So is this part of creating a site map? No. This is a manual way to submit your, your search engine, uh, your pages. Uh, if you do the site map, the site map will automatically do this to a degree for you. So that's another reason why we want a sitemap. The sitemap will do this for me. I'm going to forget to come back here and add this every time I've got a new page. But if I've got a sitemap, it'll do it for me. And one last question. Is that a radio button versus when I hit the submit and it says uh, crawl only this URL or crawl the URL with this correct link? Is there a benefit to choosing one or the other? If this is the first time you ever do it, you want to select the one that says this and the other ones. But if you are only submitting, you know, one page, it's like, no, just pay attention to this one page. If you've got many pages to submit or connected to it, you want it to call the other ones as well. And then uh, another question over here, I think. No, I think you answered it. Okay. Etching is just, etching is just finding it. So Google looks like etching render is going to show it to us as well. Yes. Yeah, it's going to show it to us so that we can see, does it actually look like it's supposed to? And all of these screens usually have some sort of learn more, mm -hmm. so something might change once in a while. So what is this all about? Yes? So if we submit a site map, would you recommend that we also fetch a Google author? Not really. I would do this early on when I, when I set this up the first time. But then after this, I'm going to let the site map take care of it. Um, but if I want to perhaps speed things up, I know I've just made this blog post. I want it to be visible to Google as soon as possible. I could go through this process. Okay. Okay, so we're going to move on to Google Analytics. There's still a lot of other screens that you could look at here, but remember there's always some sort of help button. Um, any questions here before we go on? Okay, so we'll need to do something similar with Google Analytics in that we have to um, we have to uh, set up our site and then we'll see data. The big difference with Google Analytics is it's going to tell you much more deeper data. This is basically to check the health of your site. Google Analytics is to check much deeper data such as what are the popular times of day of your of, of your visitors? Where are your visitors coming from? What's the language that they're speaking? What's the most popular page and where did the traffic come from? Um, have I reached conversion goals and such? So. I'm going to open a new window, a new tab, and let's go to google.com slash analytics. A-N-A-L-Y-C-T-I-S, google.com slash analytics. This is the one that gets all the fame. People are talking always about Google Analytics. They never mention Search Console. But we talked about it first today because it is a thing to set up and a valuable thing to use. Although I spent like, you know, 80% of my time for clients on analytics. Search Console, I still spend some time on it to check broken links and such, but this is the one that usually is more valuable for the client's time. So google.com slash analytics. As I said, I haven't researched it enough about what the premium is, why it's better. It's probably better. When you pay for something, it's usually better, but I don't know what's the difference. I need to learn Adometry, that one's new to me. I don't know anything about that one. I need to look into that. We've got plain old analytics, which is the free one. We've got analytics for mobile apps. This won't apply to most of you if you don't have a mobile app. If you didn't, if you don't have an Android app, this does not apply to you. And Tag Manager is useful. We won't really get into it, but Tag Manager is the scheme where you would go to do your keyword research. I want to check what are these popular keywords that I can use to get found. Or what are the not popular keywords that I could take advantage of that no one else is taking advantage of? And conveniently enough, that's also the place where I can go then create campaigns 
and such to, to get more traffic. Because in my SEO class, I make the joke that the easy way, there's the, there's the easy way and the hard way for SEO. And I ask who wants to know the easy way. Everyone raise their hands the easy way. And then I say, take your hand and take it to your wallet and take out your credit card because the easy way for SEO is to pay for placement. And so we can do research. What are the tags that I need to use to get found and how much do I need to pay to get that traffic? We're not going to really talk about that in this class. That's something for you, for you to explore there. We're going to look at analytics, plain old analytics. You want to click on on the top right corner. These will explain what they are. But on the top right corner, you want to click Sign In, Google Analytics. Not the premium, just plain analytics. If this is the very first time you've ever set this up, I believe it'll look a little different than mine. Let me see what yours looks like. Does it have, does it have three icons and then a sign up? On that new account, you want to um, well. Let me let me show you here. You probably. So people are in different points here. If you see, you know, all your data like that, just hold on a moment. Let me catch up the rest, the rest of us. If you if you then see a screen that says, "Add account" and such, let me show you what that means. You probably see a screen that looks like new account. You've got. Would you like to track the data of your website or your mobile app? You've got your website. It asks for account name and website name. This is slightly confusing. It's better to explain it like this. I manage data for a variety of clients. I have the clients in different folders. Google calls those folders accounts. So there's that account, there's this account, there's that account. These are accounts, folders. And within a folder, I can manage various properties. I can manage the, the data from YouTube the data from the main site, the data from their other YouTube. So these are properties. Accounts is the main folder. Properties are the things that you're tracking the data of. So what that screen is saying then, what name of the folder would you like to make? Accounts are the topmost level of organization and contain one or more tracking IDs one or more properties, one or more websites. You can call that whatever you want, probably the name of your business. And down here you can call that whatever you want. I would recommend perhaps main site, because eventually you might have also a YouTube, you might have some other website you want to track related to your main website. I'll call this Victor's Awesome Bakery. And I'm tracking the main website data. Yes. Main website. Website. If you already got yours set up. Well, I have one from a different site that I use. Okay. Checking the analytics on. Yeah, it's not so obvious. On that. It's a new website. I'm not sure where to add my other Alright, so then it's asking for your website. Here you can select HTTP or HTTPS version, and here it does not matter if you're doing the WW or non-WW site. What does matter is, are you, ch are you checking the secure or insecure version? So I don't have a secure website, so I'll just put my website. doesn't matter WW or not, so I'll just do Victor's 
awesomebakery.com. What industry do I fit in? There's a few to pick from. Hopefully you fit into one of these. If you don't, you've got other. Mine is food and drink. This can be changed later. All of this stuff can be changed. So if you don't do it right now, you can do it properly later. You definitely need the website, choose a category, what's your time zone, that's probably correct already. Yes? Um, the other website is kind of hidden on another screen. Okay, so then uh, you're filling this in, and if you're brand new to this, it may ask you more questions than what mine says. It might ask you about the number of people in your organization and other things that I don't have here. But fill those in. Fill in the ones that are required. Skip the ones that are optional. I don't know which ones it's going to show. But eventually then it might also ask you here, would you like to share your data? It's okay, even though it's recommending it. It's okay to turn them all off. What this is saying is there's a lot of data that we're going to collect, that we've been collecting. Would you like that data to also be shared with your other Google products, such as sharing this data over with your uh, Google Search Console or whatever? Yes or no? Would you like to share your data anonymously throughout all of Google Analytics for you to benchmark your website with someone else's website? Yes or no? Would you like to let your data be viewed by tech support if you need to get in contact with tech support? Yes or no? And would you like to share your data with Google specialists, which are basically people that are going to call you and try to sell you some Google services? Yes or no? If you put no on all of these, it's no detriment. And whenever you need any of these to be checked on, it can be checked on. So that does not matter, but I'm going to turn them all off. I'll click Get Tracking ID. Again, if you've got extra fields to fill in, just fill them in as best as possible. Fill in the required ones. It will be these terms of service. We didn't have to do this on, on, on Search Console, I believe, but here there is a big old terms of service, which you can read it, but it's basically saying you're not going to abuse the system, you're not going to reverse engineer the code, 
you're not going to, you are the legitimate representative of the company that you purport to, to work for. If you don't accept, you can't use it. So accept if you do want to use it. Eventually, you'll get to a screen that has this code for you to verify your site. Now, this is going to be different than Search Console. There's only one way to do this. There is no file upload, for example. So if you did the file upload method for Search Console, it won't work for here. You have to put in this bit of code here into your website. It says to get the benefits copy and paste this code into every web page you want to track. If I was making my website in the traditional Dreamweaver way, I would have an index page, my home page, I would have an about page, I would have a products page. I would need to copy that code into all three of those pages. If I'm a little bit more advanced in Dreamweaver and I use templates, I would copy that code into my main template and that code would then trickle down to all my three pages. If you're using a modern web design tool like WordPress, Weebly, Wix, Squarespace, whatever, all these modern ones, there's some way for you to do the same thing. You copy this code to your main template and it'll spread it to all your subpages. So it has to be done by the copy and pasting of code. I know, however, that over on WordPress there's also plugins that make this a lot easier. I'll help people individually soon, but you, if you've got WordPress, you want to look into a plugin called uh, Google Analytics by Yoast. Y O A S T. Yoast is the is one of the big names in WordPress. <coughs> they create a bunch of plugins, free and paid, that um, help you make your WordPress site better. And one of them is a is their Google Analytics. Uh, confirmation tool. You can look at it on your own. We'll do individual help in a moment. I have a few more things to say first. But we need to do this step where we verify, basically, uh, our analytics account, attach it to our website so that we can see the data. Different data than Search Console. Uh, before we break to help people individually, I want to mention things here. There's many screens of information on search on analytics. Let's say you want to go home. You can't do it right now. Let's say you want to do it at home. How do I get back to this screen? Wherever you're at, go ahead and click on this home button at the top. And you should see that we've got home, reporting, customization, admin. On my account here, I've got all of these folders which Google calls them accounts. So I've got all of these accounts for separate clients. And on each one of them, I've got perhaps one or more properties. Property account. This is from the home screen. In a moment, we'll look at our data, and that's going to be under reporting. We'll get to that. There's so much data that we can create shortcuts in customization. OK. Let's ignore those and let's go up to the admin link. Admin link has three columns. Account, property, view. I'm currently looking at my awesome bakery account, my awesome bakery folder, and I have various things I can do with it. Specifically, the main website of that account that could be my main website, my YouTube channel, my store, whatever. I can have multiple properties, multiple websites in this account. And then I'm looking at specific data of that website, goals and so forth. So three columns here with a bunch of settings and a bunch of links and a bunch of things. But the thing that I'm getting at is under this admin screen, under your account, under your current property, you will see tracking info. JS, the JavaScript tracking info. That code that it was giving us was JavaScript. 
So inside of tracking info, we'll see tracking code. The screen will shift to only focus on the property column, and there's your coding. This will also tell you your status. There's no button that says verify, meaning, meaning I don't copy this and paste it to my site and come back and click verify. There's no verify button. You copy and paste this into your site, and in about 48 hours or so, Google itself will check your site at some point. You come back to the screen and you will say, you know, it'll say connected, receiving data. Mine says no data received. It's not connected yet. So I'm showing you the screen because, again, you're going to get lost. There's a lot to look at on Google Analytics. And even here I'm already lost. How do I get back to my other screen? Right here, back. <coughs> Three columns. You can go to these other spots to add more managers. You can add managers at this top level, intermediate level, deep level. What this means is if I've got one folder with seven websites and I add a new manager at this level, they will see all the data of all those websites because I added them at this level. If I add a new manager at this level, they'll only see the data of the particular site I I approve, not all seven. If I add someone at this level, they'll only see the data of a particular screen of a particular site that I specify. So again, a lot to learn here, but there's help buttons and such. Let's take a moment, let's let's do our last break, and I'll also take a moment here if you need the help to set up your tracking code here on your particular site. Let's take a moment to do that. It's 11.40. We'll be back at 11.50. If you need help setting this up, call me over, and we'll continue.